NASA is currently in the process of upgrading some of its critical infrastructure necessary for the future Artemis missions and humans return to the moon. This mainly includes ground systems such as the mobile launcher or even the vehicle assembly building. However, a recent report from the GAO found that Artemis II, scheduled less than a year from now in September 2025, is at risk of being delayed. Here I'll go more in depth into the new report, some of the time concerns, what the agency is working on, and more. A few weeks ago, on October 17th, the GAO, or Government Accountability Office, released a new report specifically focusing on the Exploration Ground Systems Program, or EGS. For context, this program develops and operates the systems and facilities necessary to integrate and launch rockets and spacecraft and then recover crew for the Artemis missions. Some examples include the Mobile Launcher, Launchpad 39B, the VAB, etc. It's also a very expensive program, with the agency citing that it expects to spend $3 billion specifically for fiscal years 2024 through 2028 just for EGS. In terms of what they found, there are a few valid concerns. For example, one section is titled, Modifications for Near-Term Missions are Close to Completion, but Schedule Risks Remain. They then are quoted saying, EGS is making progress upgrading and modifying facilities and software to support Artemis 2 and 3, the next missions in NASA's campaign to return humans to the lunar surface. However, the program has little schedule margin in the current Artemis 2 and 3 mission dates to address potential technical issues, or possible delays on the SLS and Orion programs. Should any of these occur, then delays to the planned Artemis launches are possible, they said. One specific project that the agency has been working on has been the mobile launcher, which was damaged after Artemis 1. In terms of general progress on this system, they were quoted saying, EGS has been refurbishing the ML-1 after it experienced more damage than anticipated during the Artemis 1 launch. According to officials, EGS has been working to strengthen the elevator shaft and repair damage in the tower, while also providing protective barriers to damaged systems. They said these barriers are intended to reduce the risk that ML-1 will need extensive refurbishment following Artemis 2. In addition to refurbishment, EGS is certifying the ML-1 crew access arm, which crew will use to board the Orion spacecraft. According to officials, the arm was modified after Artemis 1 to be able to quickly extend in an emergency should crew need to evacuate. Officials said that as of September 2024, the arm is going through testing and certification and is the primary schedule driver for the ML-1's role to the VAB and for the Artemis 2 mission overall. The arm's testing takes place at the launch pad and must be complete before the ML-1 can roll back to the VAB for the next stage of testing. The crew access arm is at risk of delay due to challenges experienced during testing, they said. Focusing back on schedule concerns, in one telling statement they point out, while EGS elements are close to completion, the program has no schedule margin for these remaining activities. In January 2024, NASA delayed Artemis II by nine months, but officials said that the delay only provided the EGS program about three months of margin to the September 2025 launch readiness date. As of June 2024, officials said that all of this margin has been applied to technical issues already experienced at the pad during ML-1 and pad testing. Earlier in 2024, the program was reserving that time for technical issues that may arise during testing of the integrated SLS and Orion vehicle or if weather interferes with planned activities, among other things. Officials said it is likely that issues will arise because this is the first time testing many of these systems. Given the lack of margin, if further issues arise during testing or integration, there will likely be delays to the September 2025 Artemis II launch date, they said. In other words, the September 2025 launch date is almost guaranteed to be pushed back at least a few months based on these statements. At this point, they are out of margin and there still are another 11 or so months left of work. To add to that, NASA plans for one year between the Artemis II and III launches, which officials said is a very tight turnaround. As a result, they mentioned that EGS will have only limited time to react to and implement information gained from the Artemis II mission and address challenges, which could lead to scheduled delays for future missions. Further, officials said that if the Artemis II launch is delayed, it would threaten the Artemis III schedule. EGS officials stated that they are looking at requirements to determine if any can be eliminated to create schedule margin. For example, they said that since Artemis 2 and 3 will use the same hardware, there may be opportunities to reduce some testing. At the same time, however, officials noted that there could be some additional hardware development activities, depending on lessons learned from Artemis 2 and how SLS and Orion requirements evolve, they said. Basically, delays to Artemis 2 could easily have a domino effect on the rest of the program. While there are concerns regarding delays and a small amount of margin, work is being done to prepare for the upcoming mission. Artemis II will be the first crewed test flight of SLS in Orion. To support the Artemis II launch, EGS needed to make certain modifications to the Kennedy Space Center, such as adding an emergency egress system. By now, the egress system's baskets have been built, the cabling that carries the baskets to a landing area has been installed, and testing is underway at the pad. 
As of September 2024, officials said EGS has completed certification testing of the system, indicating the system is safe to transport humans. On a broader scale, EGS is currently working to finish developing and modifying elements supporting Artemis II so it can be ready to begin integration with SLS and Orion. Back in June of this year, EGS planned to be ready for integration by September 2024. After EGS certifies its new or modified elements, the program is responsible for stacking the SLS launch vehicle components in Orion and conducting and testing the checkout of the integrated SLS and Orion flight vehicles to ensure they are prepared for launch in September 2025. In total, EGS has completed a large amount of work to get to this point. As of June 2024, the remaining pre-integration work included completing software system upgrades and work on the egress system, ML1 and crew access arm, and environmental control systems. Here they are quoted saying, EGS software controls communication across Kennedy Space Center, as well as the functionality of hardware elements like the environmental control systems in the pad and in the VAB. Officials explain that as EGS develops and modifies hardware, it needs to also develop, modify, and sustain the corresponding software. They said that software changes being made specifically to support an individual mission must be complete one month prior to beginning operations, such as integrated testing and checkout in the mission's launch flow. The program is also modifying its two environmental control systems by one, upgrading the pad systems, and two, replacing the VAB system. As of earlier this year, the pad system had been built and tested and is no longer a constraint to the ML1 moving to the VAB. The VAB system has also started its initial phase of testing. This portion of testing will verify the functionality of the VAB systems. Once verified, the system will be used to support multi-element verification and validation testing with the ML1. This testing is expected to verify that the ML1 and VAB work together. Officials said the multi-element testing is required before EGS can power up the SLS core stage, which is planned for December 2024. In the report's conclusion, they say, Artemis mission success depends on the successful implementation of the EGS program. The program has made progress modifying facilities for future missions, but a significant amount of work remains, particularly for the ML2 in advance of Artemis IV. The ML2 is a necessary component for the Artemis IV mission. The project has had numerous delays since its inception and continues to track several scheduled risks, both with contractor-led construction and NASA-led verification and validation activities. As far as NASA's response to the report they mentioned, in responding to a draft of our report, NASA partially concurred with our recommendation for the EGS program and ML2 project to perform at least one Schedule Risk Analysis, or SRA, prior to beginning integrated operation activities to support the Artemis IV launch. NASA recognized our concern with the overall Artemis mission schedule risk and that the EGS is an integral piece of that integrated schedule, but does not plan to conduct an SRA, they said. NASA still has Artemis II scheduled for September 2025, however a new report highlights the risk to that schedule. By now, the agency has run out of margin, and any new delays between now and that launch date will force them to push it back. This will have a similar effect on the following Artemis missions, including 3 and 4. We will have to wait and see how it progresses, and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.